After the election of Donald Trump, many people in the country have decided to petition, either by wearing safety pins, walking out of schools, or taking it to the streets to protest. Now this protest has taken one step forward and there has been a formal petition started to tell the electors of the Electoral College to ignore the way that the states have voted and instead vote against Trump regardless of how the state voted because quote Mr. Trump is unfit to serve his scapegoating of so many Americans and his impulsivity bullying lying admitted history of sexual assault and utter lack of experience make him a danger to the republic. This is quoted from Elijah Berg, who is the starter of the petition on Change.org. Berg continued, uh, 24 states bind electors. If electors vote against their party, they usually pay a fine, and people get mad. But they can vote however they want, and there's no legal means to stop them in most states. So far, 3,861,888 people have signed this petition, and it is still rapidly growing. The last time Gallup checked to see whether Americans would vote for a law to abolish the Electoral College was in 2013, and 63% agreed and said they would. American citizens did not, in fact, elect a president November 8th. They chose electors. On December 19th, the 538 electors of the Electoral College will cast their ballots for a candidate and ultimately decide the next president. These protests have found to have a more compelling argument than they did in the beginning. I don't think you can protest a Democratic election if it didn't show clear cheating and it, it's, it was a seemingly Democratic election the same way that Mitt Romney supporters, in my opinion, would not be able to protest Obama's win. Because clearly he won in a democratic process with minimal cheating, I'm going to guess. However, I do think that you have grounds to actually protest if your candidate won the popular vote. Which means that more people in the country voted for a candidate than the other. Because if the candidate with the popular vote loses because of the structure of the electoral college, then clearly it undermines the popular vote, which is the amassed vote of the Americans who voted. So if one candidate has more votes than the other, that means that it represents more people in a country, which to most people, that should be what democratic is, right? Now the question everyone asks is asking, of course, in the back of their mind, should the Electoral College be abolished? My answer is, yes, it should be abolished. I believe that it undermines the popular vote and it makes it a more complicated process when it should just be one person, one vote, which then whoever wins a higher number of votes wins the election. That is the democratic process, whether you like it or not. Not electors putting the citizens, quote unquote, voting in check the same way the superdelegates do in the democratic primary. Many people might be surprised to know that Donald Trump agrees. Back in 2012, when it was believed that Romney had won the popular vote, he expressed his frustrations with the structure of the election being based on the Electoral College by saying, quote-unquote, the Electoral College is a disaster for democracy. This tweet has since been deleted. Um, so, in conclusion, not only did it affect this election with Hillary winning the popular vote, but losing the electoral vote, this has happened a few times in history, uh, but Al Gore lost the electoral vote in 2000 while winning the popular vote as well, just as recent as 2000. However, therefore, he lost to George Bush. People disagree or agree with the Electoral College at different times for whatever it is actually convenient for them. So I think we can all agree that at one point or another, we have disagreed with the Electoral College because it has contradicted our votes. Therefore, we should agree, Trump does, the Electoral College should be abolished.